Welcome to our lecture online. So here we're going to show that the divergence theorem doesn't always work. Well, not because the theorem isn't a good theorem, it always works under normal circumstances, but there's something special about this particular vector function. The vector function is defined as 1 over r squared times r unit vector. So what happens when we first take the divergence of that? Well, the divergence, since we only have an r component, we only have to worry about the first part of the divergence. So you can see that it's equal to 1 over r squared times the partial derivative with respect to r of r squared times the r component of that. Oop, and the r component, that's going to be like this, r squared, 1 over r squared. And uh, notice that r squared of r squared is equal to 1, you take the partial derivative of that, you get 0. So the divergence of this particular function is equal to 0. So now when we try to throw that into the divergence theorem, notice the left side, when we do the left side of this theorem, we get the integral, and again, we're going to integrate over a sphere with radius r, so we get the divergence, which is 0, times dv, and of course, the divergence, the integral of that, the integral of 0 dv is still going to be 0. That's the left side of that equation. What about the right side of the equation? So now we're going to integrate the vector function v, times a area element on the surface of that of that sphere with radius r so we're going to integrate that over the entire surface now the vector function is equal to 1 over r squared times r so this is equal to the integral over the surface of 1 over r squared times r unit vector with the dot product of a dA that's going to be r squared times the sine of theta since it's a surface that's only d theta d phi and then we realize of course that on the surface the radius always remains the same that's a constant so that can come outside the integral sign r dot oh again i keep forgetting my uh, my r unit vector because the area element is pointing in the radial direction so we need our unit vector when we take dot product that becomes equal to one r squared divided by r squared is equal to one that comes outside the integral sign so this becomes equal to the surface integral of the sine of theta d theta d phi. And now if we integrate that, we realize that becomes a double integral of the sine of theta d theta and the integral of d phi. And the, this the integral goes from 0 to pi and from 0 to 2 pi. So when we integrate that, the first integral becomes the negative cosine of theta evaluated from 0 to pi and we multiply that times phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Notice that this becomes familiar to us now. Uh, we realize that's going to be 1 plus 1 or equal to 2. This is going to be 2 pi. So the result of that is equal to 4 pi. So we can see here that on the left side we get 0. On the right side we get 4 pi. So why doesn't the divergence theorem work in this particular case? Is there something strange about this function? Why it doesn't work? Well, it turns out that if you take a look at that function, what is the value of our vector function as we change r? As r becomes large, the vector function approaches 0. So we can see here that if we think of a vector function, that we have the radial vector pointing outward in all directions. And then we realize that the farther out we go, the smaller the vector quantity becomes, or the smaller the magnitude of that vector becomes, because 1 over r squared gets smaller, 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 so you go further and further out. But what happens when you get to the very center of that? Well, when r becomes 0, 1 over 0 becomes infinite. So the value of the function at the origin is you have an infinite magnitude. And because of that, since infini infinity is not defined, because of that, at that location, we can't figure out the divergence, and we can have the divergence theorem work out. And so there's something special about the kind of functions where something happens unusual at a particular location in space. In this case, at the origin, the function is infinite, so we have to have something mathematically to describe that. And to do that, we're going to use the Dirac delta function. So that will be coming up in just a few videos. In the meanwhile, we're going to show you some other things before we then delve into this problem that we have, why in this case the divergence theorem doesn't work, and the hint is that something special happens at the origin where the function is not defined, and that's why we can't do it like this. And that is how it's done. Isn't the integral of zero constant? 
The integral is zero, zero. You can't integrate nothing. <laughs> the derivative of a constant is zero, but you can't integrate zero and end up with some constant. No, it doesn't work that way. It's tempting, but it doesn't work that way. You can't integrate zero. 